2017's Wonder Woman was a wonderful adaptation to the famed character of the same name. It featured an electrifying performance from the underrated Gal Gadot and some great scenes that would become hallmarks to the DCEU. Today's review, the sequel, Wonder Woman 1984, is hoping to keep that charm with the same great performances from its lead, backed by newcomers Pedro Pascal and Kristen Wiig. Can the film bring the same energy and continue the Wonder Woman name in good faith? Let's find out. Wonder Woman 1984 will be released direct to the streaming service HBO Max on Christmas Day. The folks at WB were kind enough to send me a review copy of the film for today's channel exclusive review. The film can be watched for free on the streaming service. Before getting into this review, let me start off by saying I genuinely enjoyed the 2017 film. Gal Gadot faced a lot of criticism after being casted and she really handled the role well. The movie was well directed featuring some great action scenes, including the highly memorable No Man's Land scene, and the two leads, Chris Pine and Gal Gadot, had some quality chemistry. It was unfortunately bogged down by the excessive climactic Act 3 that, in my opinion, hinders the full quality of the film. Gal Gadot once again brings the charisma and strength to the Wonder Woman slash Diana Prince role. She has a real magnetism to her that is entirely comparable to some of the best to ever do it. The return of Chris Pine as the pilot Steve Trevor, albeit a questionable return, still has high quality chemistry with Gal Gadot. Great links went to building and producing the world of the 80s. Production design from costumes and sets is pretty impressive, particularly the mall which feels highly reminiscent of an 80s setting. As for the rest of the film, well, one of my good friends used to say this after an unsavory viewing. It was at least in focus and shot in color. I have no doubt people will enjoy this. Grills of all ages will find strength in the character of Diana Prince once again. And please do not let some armchair YouTuber like myself take any of that from you. But Wonder Woman 1984 is a mess. It's a mess in the way The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was a mess. It's as baffling as Batman Forever and as clunky and as goofy as Superman 4 The Quest for Peace. The film's plot, spoiler free of course, is built around a MacGuffin capable of granting anyone a single wish. The wish is capable of making anything come true, but of course, with a price. This brings the attention of Maxwell Lord, played by Pedro Pascal. Lord is desperate and seeks the possession of the MacGuffin artifact to grant a wish that will save his crashing legacy. Lord obtains the MacGuffin from Kristen Wiig's Barbara Minerva, a nerdy archaeologist who befriends Diana before becoming the apex predator Cheetah. Pascal is clearly having a blast as one of the more hammy, over-the-top comic book villain performances in some time. Wig is a fine antagonist, but her story is almost beat for beat a repeat of Jamie Foxx's Max Dillon seen in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. The movie struggles through multiple plot lines seen in previous movies stretched out to a 151 minute runtime. The film feels infinitely long as it twists characters through different settings with a plot so thin that it's quite confusing to understand the motivations of any character. Maxwell Lord's motivation is just to be, well, uh, powerful, and Barbara Minerva's is to be, uh, well, powerful. But the whole point of the artifact in the clumsy story is to share the on-the-nose, be careful what you wish for. In typical bad comic book movie fashion, this means the world goes into a cataclysmic event. An event that actually requires a satellite, sending video feeds to everyone in the world. This almost feels like it's plagiarizing the climax to Batman Forever. Scenes have this Luffy, goofy sense to them, heavily reminiscent of the final two Christopher Reeve Superman movies. The change in tone is such a 180 from the 2017 movie that a back-to-back -back viewing is going to come off as jarring and nothing else. An example of this is a scene involving Wiggs Minerva discovering herself by shopping for a dress. At the end of the scene, she says, I will take it, and then this sound follows. So many baffling little things like this happen that I had to clear with Miss Tot that I wasn't just taking this too cynical that some things were so silly, even from an escapism point of view, that I couldn't actually take the third act seriously. Once again, I have no doubt Wonder Woman 1984 will have fans. Some will even say that this film wasn't for me. Someone who grew up worshipping and appreciating the woman, 
the heroine that is Diana Prince. Despite my love and appreciation for the 2017 film, I just see nothing but baffling decisions mixed with hammy performances and a climactic scene rivaling some of the most stupid comic book films I've ever seen. It's cliched, it's overindulgent, and its message of capitalism is bad is so on the nose that I found myself shockingly bored. I hope others find love in this where I couldn't. If you do, feel free to wear that proudly, and certainly do not let anyone with a tater tot as their avatar tell you otherwise. I'm going to give Wonder Woman 1984 a D+. Thanks for watching guys, as usual, big thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you've seen the movie, let me know in the comments what you think below, and I'll see you all on the next video.